listen to the adventure on Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. It's the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... Color of Chaos. Yes. What is the color of chaos, anyway? Blood red, orange fire. There it is. There's chaos right there. I love it. I love it. And I love your shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll tell you why I love it. Because I am a a total metalhead, punker, hippie. So... I'm just, I'm loving a reggae show, but I'll go later to a Slayer show after going to a Ziggy Marley show. Or You're the type of guy I like to take a car ride with, a long trip, you know right. what I mean? We don't know what's coming on next, right? Exactly, exactly. exactly. And you could just be like fucking head banging full out, and then all of a sudden, you're listening to Sublime. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. That's how I roll. Right? I mean, you know what? I come from the 80s scene in L.A. where all the fucking gatekeepers were, and I think it's the stupidest shit ever. If you like music, you like music. Do we like all music? No. But nobody likes just one type of music. Come on. No, there are certain people, though, that get so hung up, and you see it every Super Bowl. (laughs) <laughs> we need ACDC. It's like, no, man. You know, I'd like to see ACDC up in there, but I'd like to see him with maybe, you know, Lady Gaga or something. That'd be cool. Right. We need some rock and roll in the Super Bowl halftime for the next 10 years. That's all I have to say about that. There it is. There it is right there. Says the guy, says the guy that wants his Cardinals there, too. So. Okay, so then I want to know this. <laughs> Lady Gaga performed with Metallica. What do you think of her doing that? Well, I love Lady Gaga. In fact, I was just watching her on the way uh, flying out here with the a Star is Born. But it was good, I guess. You know what I mean? It, it was good. It, it wasn't horrible. She's no Fergie singing for Slash. <laughs> but but it was good. You know what I mean? There you go. Wow. Okay. Doing, t- doing her dirty. <laughs> doing her dirty. I love it. And, you know. The whole punk metal thing that I experienced in the 80s, too, was fucking stupid. I, I was a long hair that used to get my ass beat because I went to punk shows, you have know, you, and I you, went anyway. Have you seen Clockwork Orange County? I have not seen them live because I couldn't no, 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 see. It, it's a movie. Oh, the movie. So it's all about the 80s Southern California punk scene. i to look scene, at dude. that. It is it's a trip down memory lane, and you're like, oh, my God, this is the best thing that's ever happened on, on, on streaming. Right? Yeah. I'm going to have to check that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. so. I thought you were just talking about Clockwork Orange. I'm like, no, no. Clockwork Orange County, is it, it, it's a movie. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to have to check that yeah. out. Yeah. Because there's actually some OC punk bands that I've seen in the past few years that I was not allowed to see in the 80s. And I was so pumped that I got to see them, you know? And it's like, it's funny now, too, talking to some of them. Like interviewing the exploited and GBH and discharge and saying, how come I couldn't go to your fucking shows? <laughs> That's awesome. Right? You know, yeah. it's like, come on, that was stupid. I was at the first crossover show ever. Like, it was at Sun Valley Sportsman's Lodge. It was like an Elks Lodge with no security. And the first show ever with punk and metal in the same building. It was fucking, pun intended. It was the color of chaos beyond just you. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. So tell our listeners a little bit about the color of chaos. That They haven't seen you at Rocklahoma. They haven't heard you. How would you give them a visual description? You know, we're just a, I think, just a regular just rock band. And we'll play whatever we write that we think is cool. 
not to go dark and deep and all that stuff, but the, this band actually started on the back of my suicide note. Wow. And some girl I never met before, I kept saying I was broken. We would talk on the phone and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm out on my 43rd birthday. Peace out. Letting you know now. Oh. And the day I was writing my, my note, and she goes, you're not broken, because I used to call myself broken. She goes, you're beautifully broken. And I was like, God damn it, that's good. Wow. I flipped over a piece of paper, and I wrote these lyrics to beautifully broken. Then I was like, well, shit. Now that it's open, man, I got the first one out. And then I wrote a song called Hate, and then I wrote a song called Hollywood. And then I just called up three guys that I knew most of my life. It was like, hey, man, you want to meet me in the studio? And we went in and banged it out. And, and next thing you know, we got picked up by internet radio. And Hollywood, like, hit number one in a market in Australia. Wow. And so I was like, well, I might want to stick around for a few minutes. So then from that point forward, I started living my life as What's the worst that could happen? Somebody say no. Like, I was, I was ready to blow my head off. What's the worst that anybody's going to say after that? No. So Scott Weiland, on the tour that he died on, was coming through Phoenix. And I said, let me just reach out to my buddies. Hey, ask Scott if we could open up. I swear to God, 30 minutes later, he goes, yeah, Scott said no problem. Wow. These guys were pissed because we had, like, three songs. We had 30 days. So we became the big enders, man, big, big enders. Ring that shit out, you know? These two had not even met. Wow. We had shit going on, but th th their schedules were always conflicting. So we just kept, you know, doing it. They met backstage, basically. You know, intro tape rolled, and That's boom, cool we went out and, and rocked it out. And we were like, holy shit, you know? And then our next show was with Jeff Tate, with, with you know, from Coins Riot from t in Tucson. And we just started playing these, these bigger shows. And it was just under that model. What's the worst thing I'm going to say is no? Yeah. You know, and then we've gotten ding because I write, I write a lot of stuff. Like I did a song, Edge of Night. These two were in Bang Tango and they weren't getting along. And he called me up. He was just kind of just, you know, letting stuff, some stuff go. And uh, I wrote a song called Edge of Night. Hung up the phone and wrote it, you know, about, about them. And, you know, I've written stuff about, you know, Lance's, Lance's son had, had passed in oh, Afghanistan. Sorry to hear Afghanistan. That. You know, so I write stuff like that. We actually had a, a stupid ass record label. You know, they, they heard of us and, and they're like, "Do you do you write anything like party music?" And it, you know, it's like I'm fucking old as fuck, dude. Like the party days are gone. What do I know about partying now? Like Metamucil and be in bed by nine. You know, <laughs> I don't know shit about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's great. I love it. But I love the story because how many artists are on that edge right there? Like and. You know, we think of Chester and Chris, and and it's just like, holy shit. Like, the average person looks at them and thinks, what could be possibly wrong with their fucking life? Oh, yeah. And they don't realize how much can be wrong with anybody's life that you have no idea what they're going through. You know, I write a letter to each one of my kids, and I give it to them on their 18th birthday. I start on their 17th, give it to them on their 18th. So I'm down to my third kid, just turned 18. I got one that just turned 17. So the, the third kid I gave to her uh, in March, and one line says, always be kind and compassionate to everybody because you don't know what the hell th they're going through. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, I think because I went dark like that, I appreciate more and just, like, I could look at somebody and be like, oh, that, that person's dark. And I never went public because, oh, I want attention. But I was just like, it might help somebody out down the road of, ju of just going, okay. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to end with, and then that asshole, you know what I mean? Right. It, it could end with, oh, and, and then they switched it around and overcame things, you know? Yeah, totally. Sometimes you do eat a shit sandwich, and it, it tastes like shit the entire time, and, and you keep begging, you know, for more. But eventually, you know, <laughs> right? It's a true story. I mean, yeah, you know? <laughs> you know? You're trying to be helpful, but, man, you got another fucking shit sandwich for dinner. I know, right? And beautifully broken... I'm going to have to hook you up with this podcast. I know it's called Beautifully Broken. And I, I'm going to talk to him like, you got to use this band's song for your official song for the podcast. Oh, it just that'd be made, awesome. That'd be awesome. It just makes sense. Yeah. I, I want to hear about you guys meeting backstage because that's a trip to me that you meet backstage and then have to play together. Because, listen, being in a band, there has to be synergy between people. So. I'm fucking in awe that you guys just went backstage, met each other, and then fucking played together. Well, at first, it, it, Danny was, he, he much like Steve, our guitar player, he said, hey, you want to track some stuff in the studio? 
And we did, we did a, a couple of rehearsals for the, you know, pre-production. And then he showed us a logo of Color of Chaos. And at the time I thought we were just tracking. I mean, I was busy. I was in a lot of bands. I was touring a lot with Bang Tango and, and he, I was driving away and I started thinking about this logo and I, I called Steve up and I go, did we just join a band? I mean, I, go, well, I thought we were just tracking. And he goes, no, I th I, he's got a logo and everything. I think we're in a band. <laughs> so, and of course I hadn't met him, our singer Steve yet. And I just heard him, you know, the, the demos of, of, of him singing. And I was like, I don't care what he looks like. His voice is amazing. So it's, I, I think if, if you're as seasoned as we all are, we, you know, we're older, we know what we're doing. We get our homework done. It's a different you story, just, right? You, when you're older, opposed to young and yeah. stupid. <laughs> you, you know, we got, we got confidence. I mean, we got a lot of years behind us on stage and it's just, it's, it's, it's no, no big deal. Yeah. You know? I mean, i it's just like showing up and, and working, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's natural. And the way all, all four of us has been, it's, it's, they're not a single one of us being switched out. Would it work? I mean, we have. That's a band. The, the most insane chemistry that I've ever seen. So just, I love that. Cause that's a band. That is okay. A, you can tell as a listener, if I'm watching a show, and I can tell if these, these bandmates don't want to be with each other. And you can also tell when they do. And that's a good live show. It's not a good live show when you can see all the negative energy up there. So, And, and, and we're truly our brothers. Like, I've known Favela, our guitar player, since I was 19 years old. I'm 53 now. You know, like, we've tried to literally kill each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? But it's just like... I've never had the experience, and, and all bands be like, oh, there's a chemistry, and there's whatnot. When the four of us do, and that intro tape stops, and it's time, it's go time, and I count us in, we just know where each other is. You know, today, the rent-a-kit kind of took a dump on me up there, you know, and, and as a drummer, uh -huh. you know, you, you drop out for a second, and you're just hitting snare, but it's like, what the yeah. hell? But it, it just, it, you don't miss a beat, you know? I did. <laughs> but, but not that much, you know? And it, it's just it's just one of those that we're all there for each other, and we know I know where he's at, he knows where he's at, you know. And That's way cool. I want to hear your take on how your synergy between all of us here, all of you. <laughs> Let's say, well, the hostility that James Hetfield loves our thing comes between this, us two about a lot of things, okay? <laughs> Um, I love that. It's a whole different world in the studio, recording. He's very bossy for being a drummer, and but he writes <laughs> the lyrics. But it's this, but then we're outside of the studio. We're friends. We go out to dinner together, go whatever. It's same thing with Carlson. You know, he comes in and does his thing, and Lance just sits back and does his thing. So it's when we're all four together it's on stage, it's a whole different thing than being in the studio and running around with each other and it just once we get all together everything just seems so cool you know we were rehearsing without him and you know because he lives in tucson and it just wasn't the same he steps in the room everything just changes same thing when we're recording stuff writing stuff recording stuff so when we write stuff he's not there and it just doesn't make sense until he writes the lyrics he starts singing he plays his bass lines everything just comes together you get into the studio and the whole thing changes as well you record the stuff and then then the the layering starts and then you have something and that's how it's been since day one with our songs and i think that's the only thing that's kept us together is that at the end when we put the song i was like wow that's a really good song well let's keep going yeah <laughs> so and then and then we do it we do it again we like it and that's how it's built our 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 this band and why we stay together and there's been some rough patches here and there you know what i mean it's just the way it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but it's it's been like oh here's another song you know so the songs are what keeps us probably together period and it just sounds kind of rough at the beginning like i said but once every everybody's in they have their the mixtures in, and then you go, okay, well, wow, that's why we're not, that's why we're, I would say, wow, we're still together 10 years later. You know what I mean? Well, you know, you talk about songwriting, and in one of my interviews with Joe from the Vandals, he talked about songwriting, and he's like, to be a really good punk band, 
You really need to have good songwriting. We suck, but the Descendants, that's songwriting. And that's why they're still around. You know, to, to kind of add to, add, add to what he had going on, Lance was invited to be in a movie with Drew that was a part of uh, Bang Tango. So, and, and Dave Elfson's a part of it and, and of uh, stuff. And uh, so he came back. He's like, hey, they want to look at songs. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll cut them a deal. I'll cut them a back end deal. You know what I mean? Let's just get some stuff placed and we'll worry about the, the finances <laughs> later. And uh, I said, hey, does he want us to write a song? So these, so he, we're in rehearsal and he goes, at the end of it, he goes, yeah, yeah. He said, he, he, he said he'd listen to it. So I'm like, shit, driving home all the way home. I'm like, and it's a horror movie. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's a monster inside of me. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. I go home, my house is all quiet. I get on my piano and I go, I play three notes, singing monster inside. I wake up everybody in my house, they're pissed off. I send it to these three, nothing. Not a hey, that sucked. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So fast forward. That's the worst, by the way. The deadline's coming down and they're like, hey, we need to hear this song. So I call all these guys up and I'm like, meet in the studio. I've got an idea. And we actually just recorded whatever the hell I had as an idea. And it actually turned out pretty decent, I think. Nice. You know? That's sometimes how it goes. Like me in the studio, when I'm doing like a voiceover or something like that, first take, I'll get it done right. If I don't get it done right the first take, it's like the 50th take. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's got to be that natural thing. That's the thing. It's like you just come and just don't even think about it and do it. We have hours and hours. We always are recording, not in a studio, but like something to record ourselves rehearsal-wise. Hours of, of, of songs. And we'll be, we'll be in like a rut and we'll, we'll to like listen through it and stuff. And I, I always say, if, it didn't hiss, if lightning didn't strike the first time, it's probably not there. Right. You know? Exactly. Every once in a while, we might go to something, and it's 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 like a wrecking yard. Be like, hey, that's a cool hubcap. Let's let's throw that on. You know, right, right. And it's funny you talked about James and Lars. So, what do you think about the idea of when you have those issues, going to band therapy? <laughs> well, he's already against marriage therapy, so he's definitely not going to band therapy. You know what I mean? <laughs> This ain't paying the bills, and so he's definitely not going to therapy. But we f we figure it out because at the end of the day, we all go home to separate. We go to separate right. homes. We're like, peace out. Usually, we do a show, and if there's nothing coming up sooner, we don't see each other or talk to each other for a while. So until something comes up, and then we're like, well, we better start rehearsing again. You know what I mean? And we just take time away from each other. I think that's good. You know what I mean? For it is. any relationship. We do. We do. Oh, yeah. And if, it, if you could do that with a marriage, it'd probably be better, but that ain't going to happen. But with us, <laughs> <laughs> with us, we do take that time off. And we're, there, was couple, there was months where we wouldn't even, didn't even see each other, you know, along those 10 years. But then we get back to, and then everything kind of works its way. And then we're, we start gigging again. But yeah, it's the break. the The break between a lot of stuff is what's helped helped us out. I think at the end of the day, and we don't need therapy. That is our therapy, being away from each other. And that <laughs> is therapy. It really is. So it actually makes us miss each other. You know, we did we did a th three shows in twenty four hours. One of them wow. we opened up for Megadeth. Nice. The second was a Harley Davidson dealership, and the third one was it was a part was a party. Between the, the Harley Davidson dealership and the, and the party, him and I just about killed each other to the point where we're in separate vehicles and my wife's going, oh, my God, I can't believe you said all that stuff. And he's like, and his wife is saying, oh, my God, I can't believe you said all this stuff. And then literally my wife goes, what are you going to do when you get to the venue? You know, to, It was a private party at a venue. And I go, I go I've known the guys for so long. He's either going to come up to me and be like, are we done? And then, you know, we'll kiss each other on the cheek, you know, and then that's it. That's it. You know what I mean? That's what ended up happening. It sounds like, you know, me and my best bro, he passed away last year, but we were oh, best bros since 13, thanks. And uh, we went to all the shows together. But a lot of times we would go to shows. After the show, something would happen. I remember one story in particular where we just, we stopped in the middle of gang territory Van Nuys, got out of the car and started physically fighting <laughs> Throwing blows, you know, and then the next day we were going to another show. <laughs> that, that's that's how it is, though. We were in rehearsal one day, and I don't know what happened. 
him and I have a great relationship as long as we're not talking about music or band. <laughs> right? We're, 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 we're the sweetest, kindest people. Then the, the tempers flare up when, when those two topics are up. We're in rehearsal, and it's a, it's a fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And I throw a symbol at him, and I'm like, fuck this. And he's just like, I'm going to fucking beat your fucking car. I mean, and, and, and we're like, oh, whatever. And then I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go outside. And I'm, I'm laughing with him. I'm like, oh, that got heated, blah, blah, blah. And then <laughs> he's wheeling the fucking amp out, out of our rehearsal studio dad, dad, down the fucking ramp. And, and, and I'm like, where are you going? And he's like, fuck this, I'm out. And I go, wait a second. After 30 fucking years, that's what broke the camel's back? Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. A symbol, a symbol to the head, you know what I mean? Trying to hit each other with cars. With it. That, that wasn't it. But it was just, a, you know, I threw the symbol your way, your direction. <laughs> well, it's just because I, I knew I'd go to jail if I didn't walk out with my stuff. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I want to hear your guys' take when this is going on. It's almost like... <laughs> The kids of two parents getting you know, divorced. I just, I giggle. I just sit there <laughs> and I, on my, in my corner and I laugh. We just talk it's, to each other. Yeah, we just, yeah. We, we just stop. We're like, so anyway, how are you doing today? And what you do? <laughs> it's hot out, isn't it? You know, and they're, we're, sometimes we have to talk a little louder because they're getting loud. And when, yeah, when things start getting thrown, then you kind of look over to make sure you're not going to get hit. But he and I just, we kind of ignore it. I, I wonder, too, if that makes for a better live show, that raw, just the rawness that makes you, like, really kill it on stage. It feels that way when we're on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because everything, like I said, the minute that intro tape starts, There's a it's switch. a whole different off. You know what I mean? And we're laughing and, you know. And it just one of us will fuck up and we'll be like, oh, hey, buddy, it's you. You know what I mean? And then we just get moving. Um, on that <laughs> note, <The side>. uh, <laughs> put it this way, just there's been a lot of quiet moments. That's why we, like I said, there's a big break <laughs> to each other. No, no, yeah. everything's good. We brought we brought up some feelings No, no, here. no, no, not at all. No, it just it's just fine. Thank, thank you for the therapy you were mentioning. Yeah, no, this is the therapy. <laughs> I'll, we were doing a lot of rehearsing up, coming up to the show, so we were like, all right, I, I can't do any more rehearsals until Carlson walks back into his room. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, uh, but it, no, it, there's really no harsh things, but there is some moments where you're pissed off. I, mean, I, I think I'm going to call this interview, I'm going to title it Some Kind of Chaos. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's right? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, man. That is good shit, right? So... Rocklahoma, how did that happen? How did you get invited to Rocklahoma? How did you get here? Well, I was sitting at home one day, and I was like, oh, no. Actually, <laughs> he handles all this kind of stuff. Well, through Doug Burgess, the DAB yeah, stage. Yeah. So we reached out with him, to him three years ago. And, you know, and to get picked, I guess, out of, I imagine he gets a lot of submittals. So, and he just had, happened to pick us that one time. And then, again, we skipped a year. And then last year, he missed us. And then this year, again, I reached out to him and asked if, you know, if he needed us again. And he's like, sure. So it, it's, it's cool. You know what I mean? To come out here, it's, it's just good to get on the road and play your music to other people. You know what I mean? You can only go so far sometimes without financial support. And yeah. it's tough for younger bands. And, and you know, so it, it's, you know, it's just awesome. Doug Burgess is really who we got to thank for in the DEB stage for giving the bands opportunities that are not yeah. really, you know, worldwide known and don't have a song on the record. And but he definitely gives the bands that are not as well known an opportunity to share the music, which is really really cool. Yeah, you know I mean, I think it's totally cool because listen, we a bunch of us were talking about this. Like the big bands nowadays, they're on their way out. Like, and we need the new coming in so that the genre of rock, which includes everything on your shirt. Yeah, yeah. Rock is rock. Every, it's all rock. For it to continue, you have to have new blood all the time coming in. I think now, especially more than ever, that there's, it amazes me, I think of all these bands that I love, that I saw when I was a teenager and they were a teenager, that they're like, 60s, 50s, 70s up there, and these kids are into them. I remember being that age, and it's like, fuck that. If they're more than five years older than me, I'm not going to their show unless, oh, maybe Iron Maiden. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but other than that, it's like, 
oh, look, Metallica's playing. We're going to go see them at the Troubadour, you know, type of thing. My, my son, it, it, he's always, you know, he's 31 years old, and he's like, oh, you know, I'm hanging out with the Swirlies. I'm hanging out with, you know, Sonic Youth and all that stuff. And, and, and I'm like, wow, man, that's, that, that's so rad, dude. That is you rad, know? right? Yeah. I put my son in his first mosh pit, and I put my two of my grandsons in their first mosh pits. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And the look on their face. Like, I remember my son. We were at Metallica's Tattoo the Earth tour, and Slipknot was coming on. They were the opening band. And I said to him, this is, this is how it goes. We were, like, dead center up against the rail. I said, you're going to drop back a little bit, and people are going to start pushing you. Don't get pissed. It's all in fun. And when it started and people were like, shove him, I saw the look on his face like he was going to punch somebody. I'm like, chill out, just relax. And then like two minutes later, this grin ear to ear, like he got it. Like it hit, you know. And I walked down like the baton has been passed, man. And it, he's been doing it ever since. And like I take him to festivals sometimes now. He's almost 40 He's going in the pit with me, so it's cool. It's a beautiful shit. thing, man. It is. It is because my dad would have never gone in the pit with me. It would be like, let's go to a Frank Sinatra show. <laughs> yeah, he does have a good voice, but you're not going to pit in Frank Sinatra for no. sure. So, how do people reach out to you on socials, on the web? Check everything out you got. Colorchaos.com. We're across them all. Spotify, Apple, you know, uh, YouTube. We have, you know. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. We do have a TikTok page. There's not a whole lot going on. TikTok? What are we doing on TikTok, man? Are we going to do the... We do, yeah, do, do yeah. some dances in there, man? No, huh? you know what? You, I have the idea for your guys' TikTok. There are arguments. That would be the best TikTok right there. <laughs> you know, you know... You know what we should do is do it as I Love Lucy, as, as like pick one of those and like lip sync it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it could be like the, the Color of Chaos death match. <laughs> and we should thanks. get those claymations. Remember that, remember that clay thing on, on Yeah, uh, celebrity MTV? death match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking that's how we should handle presidential elections from now on. Fuck the voting and the bullshit. Just let's have go a back to the Coliseums. Go, go back to the Coliseum. Hundred percent, because the way we're doing it now is kind of fucked, yeah. and nobody's happy, and we're all in a death match. Let's just let them have the death match, and we all love each other and stop this division bullshit. Exactly. See, you know? and that's punk rock right there. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. And I gotta tell you something that you brought that up. One thing that has been disturbing me for the past four years: since when did punk rock be pro-government? I want to know that. I really want to know that. Sign of the times. Sign right? of the times. Right, right. Everything's flipping around. You know what I mean? To me, that's the color of chaos right there. Right on, right on. Anything else you got going on after Rocklahoma that you want everybody to know about? We're, we're waiting for the movie to be completed, where the, the movie that uh, Lance was in, and so we can release our next single. Not we're gonna get into the studio and record something else, and then we'll we'll release that too. So yeah, just if you can find us on Facebook, just catch us there. We do you know updates and everything. We do got a couple shows coming up in October. That's Phoenix and Tucson. But other than that, just we'll we'll have that single out hopefully before the end of the year. You know what I mean? And I'm all about artwork, and I fucking love this guitar pick that you just put on my table here. Okay, the artwork on this fucker is cool as hell, and. I collect picks. Oh, do you? Yeah, for my guitar that I rarely play, because I suck. <laughs> wow. This band is known for its guitar picks. That's fucking cool as hell, too. That is way cool. I love it. Because I think artwork's a big part of, oh, we get another one, too. I should say that more often. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Okay. They hate us because oh, they the ain't too. us. I love that. You've made it, then. If you have haters, you've made it. Like, I think that's what you, If you were to 
teach one thing to a young artist, I think that's the thing to teach them. You ain't shit until somebody's talking shit about you on on the internet. Hundred percent. You know, like that's just it. My 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 son my son's. No, my son's kind of well known and stuff, and he he did something recently, and got hate on there. And I called him up, and I'm like, "Congrats, you fucking made it. You're big time now, bro. You got haters." You know what I love? Like him or don't like him, Ronnie Radke's TikTok. He everyone he attacks his haters and is funny as shit, because he can do it on there with it being entertaining instead of combating them. But he's combative. In reverse, right? Yeah. So you, you know what's funny is is people have taken out their work and be like, fuck you. And you're fine with it. Now everybody's not fine with it. Right. You know what I mean? They're like, it was a fuck you. And I'm like, no, it's like a fuck you. Exactly. You know? That's all it is. It's like I'm from New York, dude. That was like the, the, the crosswalk lady. Fuck you. I'm born in New York, grew up in Jersey. If you didn't say that 10 times a day to your friends... You, you, you were, a, po- beat, you were a poser, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you did get your ass beat. As a matter of fact, it's funny you should bring that up, and you would love this, being from New York. So I had a big mouth when I was a kid, but not a big body. Like, I'm big now compared to the way I was when I was young. And there was this dude I, that was my next-door neighbor. I never met him. Seventh grade, he was as big as we are now, okay? And I was mouthing off to him, and he kicked the living shit at me all over the parking lot. My dad was watching out the window, did nothing. I walk in, and because he grew up in the streets in Newark, so, like, fight your way out of this fucking thing. And uh, he goes to me, yeah, I didn't do anything because you deserved it. Let it be a lesson. Don't open your mouth unless you're ready to get your ass kicked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? And that carried with me that my best bro that I was talking about, we used to talk just, like, a couple years ago, like, don't you hate when we used to go and get in those fights knowing you're going to get your ass kicked, but you did it anyway? You know, yeah. it's just kind of the way it is. You yeah, know? exactly. So that's the color of chaos, too. Awesome. Thank you guys for being at Rock, thank Oklahoma. You. And yeah, thank thanks you so for much. being on the Adventures of Bike Man. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.